BBC Africa Eye investigates Black Axe, one of the most feared and powerful organized crime groups in Nigeria. For years, Nigerians have wondered if this cult group is linked to politicians. Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says the commission requires 305 billion naira to prepare for the 2023 election and purchase materials needed to cover several by-elections across the country. Does this make economic sense? And as always, we will be reviewing the dailies with an analyst. And thank you for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bopo. I mean, it's good to have you back. Yes, great to be back. Um, you know, pretty exciting. There's a build up to Christmas Day. It's 21st already. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that this year is going to be, a, you know, a lot better than last year's Christmas. COVID-19 basically was, you know, most of the conversation last year. Mm. And so uh, it was a little different. Well, it's not quite different from what we're expecting. I mean, we're just hoping that we don't have another lockdown because already it's been stated that we're, we're in the fourth, um, we're experiencing uh, the fourth wave of COVID-19 with the Omicron variant right here. It yeah. calls for a lot of caution in the season and in the period where we're making merry and, you know, having a lot of great time. Yeah, just to quickly remind everyone, because I, I, see, I see a lot of people moving around Lagos um, and across the country, you know, like there's no pandemic anymore. But just to remind you that there still is uh, COVID-19 everywhere. And, you know, these little symptoms of cough and sore throats and, uh, you know, a bit of little weakness fever. here everywhere. And people say, no, it's because my genotype is AA. No, you, you know, my, <laughs> it just might be COVID-19 positive. So um, go get tested. You know, and of course, remember to stay safe as much as you can. Let's start with our top trending stories this morning. We'll first of all say congratulations to a young uh, Nigerian, a 17-year-old uh, Jemima Marcus, who became Lagos State Governor for one day um, yesterday. Of course, uh, she won the Spelling Bee competition um, across the state, and it, that, of course, earns her the position as, as uh, Governor of Lagos State for one day. Uh, she's a student of uh, Angus Memorial Secondary School in Shomolu, Lagos East. And, um, you know, so congratulations to her. And, um, you know, it, it's pretty interesting because this has gone on for a very, very long time. This started in 2001 mm. uh, by Oluremi Tinubu um, and has continued to be a tradition. Every year there is a Lagos State Governor for one year. And it's a great thing. Um, one day. We've seen, you know, a couple of times it's been a male, sometimes female. But, you know, I'm excited, you know, for her. Um, I'm not sure how much, you know, you will be able to achieve in one day as governor. Uh, if I was governor for one day... Uh, I, I would, you know, very likely assign some. You know, what, um, usually, so I think to myself, I mean, because uh, I haven't been in the sport, but usually I just think to myself, uh, with one becoming a governor for one day, are they allowed to, apart from the fact that, yes, uh, they observe all of the protocols, like yesterday she presided over, you know, the meeting and all of that. I mean, are they allowed to make like very real decisions? Uh, you know, like a governor for one day, are they allowed? the powers are they aware that the powers you know no, to make policies I don't, think so. I don't think the state constitution or the the you know national the, the nigerian constitution you know empowers them on that level you know so yes so it's just can. a ceremonial, it's a ceremonial thing yes absolutely um but i'm hoping that there are some perks you know to being governor for one day um of a state as big as lagos you know hopefully I, you can make some changes I, I heard that she made some demands you know with regards funding for schools secondary schools across lagos and across the country and some of all of that mm. so I'm, I'm also also thinking that it's also a very good uh compensating because over time you hear the comparison where people will begin to compare and say when you have beauty pageants and all of the beauty contests across and then you have the fact that people win a lot of cash with all of the reality tv shows and nothing is been you know given to those who are doing very well academically and i think that this is a great one i mean it just goes it would be in history that you were governor for one day even though it's a ceremonial function i, I think it would yeah. go a long way you know in boosting the morale of those kids absolutely and of course you know with the spelling bee competition also you know it, it also then tells you that there's still some interest in that competition um which has been on for what maybe about 20 years now um and is still continuing to produce very very brilliant minds so let's see where you know some of these people who have won that competition eventually turn out um, you know later in life 
Well, congratulations to her. We'll move away from there now and move uh, to talking to electricity matters where the Nigerian uh, government has stated that three neighboring countries, uh, Niger, Togo and Benin Republic, didn't pay a dime for the electricity they consumed from Nigeria. Uh, for 2020. They were given a bill of 770 million naira uh, by the um, um, Nigerian uh, Electricity Regulatory Commission and um, a Nigerian bulk, sorry, Nigerian bulk electricity trading company. Um, 770 million naira, but they didn't get to pay anything. And of course, this is blamed on the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic woes that it caused uh, for those countries. Um, so that's, that's you know, pretty interesting, you know, as uh, Nigerians themselves, you know, also struggle with pain uh, for electricity consumed. Um, neighboring countries also having the same, you know, challenge. And uh, you, it calls for a lot of concern because one would rather think that, uh, first of all, I really do not know why we're, if we're actually supposed to make money from it, because at the end of the day, I mean, that's a lot of money. Uh, no sentiment whatsoever as business. And if you are engaged in business, um, majorly a lot of persons will want to make profits. So I'm, I'm just thinking, how do we as a country, we're not even able to you know, produce to cater for the needs and the entire population as it is. I mean, the past situation is very epileptic. You want to talk about generation. And some people would say, yes, we are talking about privatization, but you know, how privatized are we, or how privatized is the private sector, I mean, the past sector, being that you still have you know, the government uh, on the other side. Now, but, so before we get to the fact that we're also giving neighboring countries power and not even collecting uh how did we even get to that point that we're not able to cater for our own need before we're now selling or you know giving power to neighboring country it is really yeah. really bad i think that uh we should just come back and find a way to see how uh we're able to mop up all of that cash that's a lot of money and it doesn't yeah, make well. sense so if, for me i would rather say discontinue What's the essence of supplying power and then you're not getting, and then we're making all of the excuses. And then we don't even have, because, you know, the power sector or the energy sector is very critical to economic development. Well, I mean, um, I mean so I think, um, you know, it, it, it's, it can be described as Niger one of the things Nigeria has exported, you know, um, electricity, because we're able to generate some level of electricity here. Yes, you know, it's also, you know, good to put, place that argument in that, well, Nigerians themselves don't have enough electricity. Um, Nigerians are seeking electricity for business and, you know, it will improve greatly on the economy of the country if we can have uh, generate enough electricity 10,000 20,000 40,000 50,000 megawatts uh, for Nigeria's current population there's you know there's a fair argument there you know but if we have enough you know that we can also export and generate income for the country then I personally don't see anything wrong with it um, um, whether the, the excuse basically that this, this is where I have a challenge the excuse that well the economies of these countries have suffered so much in the last uh, one or two years uh, because of the pandemic and that's the reason they've not been able to pay that may not you know really really sit well you know 100% with me but um, I'm sure the Nigerian government knows what it's doing I'm, I'm sure that the Nigerian um, electricity um, Nigerian bulk electricity trading company also you know understands what it's doing and we'll to get their funds from these countries um, business is business sometimes is bad you know and I'm sure this happens to everybody um, well I totally understand you know that particular part that you know business is business and sometimes is bad but you also want to agree with me that uh, with indebtedness and you know with the way the economy is going we have cash we have okay we have funds. Yeah. People are owing this country. And it's time that we begin to get all of this monies from wherever it is. Uh, so we're able, you know, to push them into infrastructure development. Let's not even forget that the government is saying, oh, in 2022, just in a few days to come, uh, we will be introducing new taxes, not maybe in January, but maybe after the first quarter of 2022. And then you, you have new, you know, tax regime and all of that, which is not necessary rather than, uh, you know, introduce new tax regime. I'm thinking that we have, you know, there are resources everywhere where we can just look at and then, you know, begin to see how we can retrieve all of that. that it's not very fair for everyone. I totally understand that, you know, COVID-19 has a huge impact on every, you know, the entire world. But we also need to understand that if you are in business, profit is actually what it is. And we should find a way, you know, to get all of those resources so back. So what are we going to do now that they're owing us? <laughs> well, they need to come consult me. <laughs>
Anyway, uh, away from Togo and Niger and, uh, of course, Benin Republic, or in Nigeria, 770 million naira for electricity in uh, 2020. Let's now, of, of course, uh, talk about more of the effects of COVID-19, but something um, on a positive note, the, um, of course, uh, NAVDAC has given the Afe Babalola University at Doikiti the license and the go-ahead to produce a herbal medicine, as it is um, you know, popularly called, um, against COVID-19. Um, they, of course, um, you know, had done, done some trials in the past and eventually have given them the license to go ahead and produce it. This is not a vaccine now. This is instead a um, drug, a herbal drug, you know, that will help fight against the effects of COVID-19. Um, you know, for I think for the last couple of months, we've continuously said that we've still not been able to understand exactly um, the peculiarities in Nigeria's COVID-19 story, you know, why uh, we've, you know, seemingly been able to have a better indices, better figures, um, very, very low death rate with regards to COVID-19. Um, we've not been able to understand that. And so I believe that it's, it's important that they continue to do whatever research is necessary, that they continue to understand exactly how the Nigerian uh, society has been able to deal with COVID-19. And so it helps us to also produce our own medication if possible. Because I know a lot of people have used herbal medicines in the past. They're still using herbal medicines today uh, to fight COVID-19. There's still some concoctions that they mix together, uh, you know, to create some, you know, type of drug that will fight it. And they, these are happening in households across the country. A lot of people don't even bother, you know, going to the hospital or bother going to, you know, seek um, um, uh, medical advice, you know, to get proper medication. They, they have some agbo that they drink. <laughs> okay. and, I mean, if it has been, if it has actually been no, helping, I, I, then we... I'm, I'm thinking that it's not just limited to, you know, COVID here now, because COVID is new. We're still trying to understand it. Prior to this time, you know that uh, there are a lot of traditional herbal stuff mm -hmm. that people get to take, and then it works for them. Now, cherry is the word, you know, I'm really... Um, I must say that this is good news for us because we have constantly talked about the fact that, you know, Nigeria is very dependent on the Western world. So over time, when Omicron, you know, broke out again, of course, we started talking about Omicron. And then it got to me, got me thinking. And I said, I started asking questions. Um, why is it that we just have to follow everything? Because if you look at it, it's like you have the situation and then they say, OK, you have to do this. This is what it is. And then we say, OK, yes, it is what it is. It feels like we don't even go back to also do our research. It's like um, you constantly, I would want to cite an example where like going to church and then the pastor says X, Y, Z, you have to go back to your Bible and verify or you go back to the Quran and find out if, you know, really that is what it is. So it's a good thing that we're, you know, taking, uh, you know, going back to the drawing board, whatever it is, and we're trying to find a way. We're also trying to, you know, solve the problem. Whether or not we get it right, it's not even the, the solution. I mean, it's not even the point. The point is we're making an effort, we're trying, and it's commendable, what is traditional. Because yeah. we, we need to well, find yeah. things that works for us. We need to find, you know, what works for us as a people uh, because you, we're very unique. I completely agree. And that's why I said that it's important that we as a country understand exactly, you know, what the peculiarities are with our COVID-19 situation. We cannot continue to follow. And I totally agree with you. We can't continue to follow the trends across the world. They say, oh, there's a third wave. Nigeria says, oh, Oh, we're in a uh, third wave. They, there's a fourth wave. We say, oh, we're in fourth wave also. We're but locking we down really and then we're locking down. Exactly. We're locking down because every other place is locking down. But, you know, sadly, we don't, and in my opinion, we don't even know exactly what the figures are, you know, you know, to the letter, the exact figures with regards to COVID-19 in Nigeria. I don't think we're testing as much as we were testing in 2020 anymore. I don't think that we are, you know, doing as much research as we were doing before, if we're doing any research. Um, and so if we don't understand, once again, South Africa has worse you know, um, um, casualty figures with regards to COVID-19 and other African countries. But Nigeria somehow, it's either we do not know or we've somehow just been lucky. Or the government just needs to figure out what exactly is with the Nigerian system. What so, is in so, our so I'll constantly, I'll, I'll I'll constantly just make reference to you know, that statement by Tony Blair at the time, where he... There were concerns that, you know, in the entire continent, we, the entire continent at some point had recorded uh, about 3,000 cases or, you know, of COVID-19, if, if I'm not mistaken. And then when you begin to make the comparison, you juxtapose that with the number of deaths in the entire continent, yes. it wasn't commensurate. So, you know, several arguments that are coming through, like maybe tacky, 
we're just being very tacky with data. Uh, you know, we're not being, there's something, they couldn't really place it. Because if you look at the number of persons who have contracted the virus, and then the number of deaths recorded, you, you know, there's a discrepancy. And then you can't understand why you should not have, because you're supposed to have more deaths. So at the time, we're recording just 100 persons who have died in the entire continent. So yes, I'm thinking that it's time that the African Union, I said it before, because Apart from, you know, COVID-19 as a health concern, I'm thinking that it's time that, you know, Africa as a continent come back, you know, look inward. If we're different, you know, look back and find out what is, you know, very peculiar with us. And let's just find a way to solve it and understand what it is. Because it's still a novel virus as long as we're concerned and we're still trying to understand how it operates and we'll never, you know, it's not like we'll have a grab over it. I mean, and so why we've been able to survive it. That, that's my own. You know, exactly. You know, because what, what exactly it, is it in, I mean, you know, we, we, we had you, we had you you know, an expert health expert, a commissioner for health sometimes speaking on this platform some weeks back. And, and she said something. If you, if you look at, you know, what we have been doing, like you have mentioned, are we, is it that we're, you know, keeping up with the protocols? You go out, you find out that out of 10 persons, you probably just find like two who are pro probably, um, you know, observing the protocols, wearing their nose masks and trying to observe, you know, social distancing and what have you. So what, what, is, what is it about us? Is it that we're keeping to the protocols? I mean, you want to talk about vaccination, only 2% of the entire population. So uh, we need to sit back. It's a good one. It's a brilliant yeah. one. Uh, like I always say, I don't care what the end result is. I don't know what it is, but I just think that this is an I effort mean, I, and it's I, commendable. I care what the end result is. Um, no, well, what I'm saying is, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, uh, the fact that you're making an effort is commendable. Yeah. So whether or not we get to that point that we're saying, oh, it's going to work, or, you know, we're going to get, it's going to cure or it's going to solve any problem. But the fact that we have actually made an effort, we're trying to understand, we're trying to solve a problem, is very commendable. I should give license to Agbo sellers, <laughs> if that's what it is. I mean, if, we, if we're able to do enough research and we say that it is a we do, or it is, um, you know, uh, the hot, It sounds hot, like you're uh, very hungry stew, this morning. The, <laughs> the <laughs> you're just that they sell across Lagos. It might be anything. It could really just be anything. Mm. Um, but until we do enough research, you know, then we're just going to continue, you know, doing trial and error with our healthcare system. Anyway, um, that's for Top Trending this morning. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going through the major newspapers across Nigeria this morning. Let's uh, share with you what stories have made the headlines. We'll be back.